Dolphins fans, what's up? It's Will Scott with Dolphins today here talking about the latest Miami Dolphins news and rumors. We got some injury news to discuss here in a second. But first, I want y'all to go down, like the video if you're excited about week two. You know it's the only thing better about being 1-0. Being 2-0, which is what the Dolphins are going to be after they beat the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore this weekend. If you're pumped about that game, go down, hit the thumbs up icon down below. Let's begin the show talking about Austin Jackson because the status for that game against Baltimore very much in the air. Dolphins starting right tackle did suffer a ankle injury in the last game against the New England Patriots. Mike McDaniel in his press conference yesterday asked about AJ. Here's what he said. He stayed in uniform and could have gone back in in an emergency situation. It's serious enough that we're getting some more eyes on it. We'll be continuing along the process to have the best medical information on him moving forward to be determined. This is not ideal. The Dolphins' offensive line already had practically no depth. Now you have this injury with your starting right tackle, Austin Jackson. I was happy about the way A.J. was performing in the preseason. He looked decent in his limited snaps the other day before he got hurt. So I'm a little bit concerned right now, if you couldn't tell, based on the 100 shows I've done about the offensive line. I'm concerned about the offensive line because you look at the depth here, there's not much of it. Right now you have three backup offensive linemen. Teron Armstead, Liam Eikenberg, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, A.J. right now you're starting five. Then you have Greg Little, Robert Jones, Michael Dieter. And Mike McDaniel was, again, asked about that Austin Jackson injury situation, and he said it's serious enough that we're having more eyes on it, which makes me very worried about A.J.'s status for Sunday's game. He said to be determined in terms of that status. So if Austin Jackson can't go, uh, Greg Little would be the next man up, and Little very much struggled when he came in to replace Austin Jackson after A.J. went down on Sunday against New England. Let's take a look at the PFF grades here. 44.9 overall, 60.1 pass, I should say run block, 55.6 pass block grade for Greg Little. So, yeah, he was not great on Sunday, and he would be starting and protecting two of Tungavailoa's blind side if A.J. cannot go on Sunday. That is alarming. Do you have any confidence in Greg Little? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comment section. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So when an ad break comes, let me know. Type Y for yes or type N for no. So if AJ can't go, they probably start Little and elevate one of these two names to the active roster. Both of these guys are on the practice squad right now. Larnell Coleman, who was a seventh-round pick by the Finns in 2021, and then Keon Smith, who is UDFA by the Falcons in 2021, signed with the Dolphins practice squad. So those are the two tackles on your practice squad right now. One of those guys, probably Larnell Coleman, would get activated for Sunday, and Coleman struggled in the preseason. you got to sign someone, to be quite frank. If A.J. can't go, fine, start Greg Little. But if Greg Little struggles, it'd be nice to have someone who has a lot of experience along an NFL offensive line to come in and play the right tackle position, which is arguably the most important position on this Dolphins offensive line because that's the person protecting Tua's blind side. And we saw Tua under a lot of pressure on Sunday again with Greg Little in the game. Here are some free agent options. And I think that when you talk about signing somebody, it's going to depend on the severity of Austin Jackson's injury. If he just misses one game, which I think is more likely at this point than missing multiple games, then yeah, you're probably not going to sign one of these five guys. However, if it's more serious, you probably need to. Darrell Williams, shout out Maurice Jenkins. He wants Darrell Williams in Miami more than I wanted JC in Miami. Darrell Williams is an option. Eric Fisher, Bobby Massey, Brandon Shell, Tyrell Crosby, the best offensive tackle still remaining in free agency. Quite frankly, I like all five of these guys. I think all five of them would be far better than a little, maybe even better than Austin Jackson, especially Darrell Williams. Eric Fisher, former number one overall pick, had a lot of success with the Colts and the Chiefs. So I like all five of those names. They're all decent options. And certainly if AJ's injury is significant, they might bring one of those guys in. 
Do you want to sign an offensive tackle? Type S for sign or type P for pass down in the comments section. Go down, chime in. Do you think the Dolphins should sign an offensive tackle? Maybe not even one of those five names, but do you just think they need to bring someone in with the Austin Jackson injury being a concern for this football team in week two? Another option you have, reshuffling the current offensive line. I know what a lot of y'all are thinking. No, I'm not proposing moving Connor Williams, at least right now. Here's what the offensive line looked like with Jackson and Little out on Sunday. So Little came in to replace Jackson, then Little got a little bit banged up. He left for a play or two. Here's what the offensive line looked like with both of those guys out of the game. Teron Armstead, Liam Eikenberg, Connor Williams, and then Robert Jones at right guard. You slid your right guard, Robert Hunt, to right tackle. So let's say that A.J. cannot go. This is a very realistic offensive line. For Sunday's game, I would feel much better about Robert Hunt playing the right tackle position than Greg Little playing that spot right now. You can bet on the fins on Sunday, by the way, if you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code DOLPHINS125. That means you can get a 125% deposit bonus. Great deal. Go and take advantage because Vegas, once again, disrespecting the Miami Dolphins in Baltimore. The Ravens, a three and a half point favorite. I think this is going to be a close game. I'm taking plus three and a half. I'm taking money line. Let's ride. The total is at 43 and a half. Patrick Seatman, the producer, was like, man, that total seems a little bit low. Two good offenses going at it. We'll see what happens, but you can go bet. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Dolphins125. Go bet on the fence. Let's get into another injury update. This time talking about Seath and Carter, the tight end that left Sunday's game due to an injury. We know now why he left the game. This is what Mike McDaniel said about Seathan. He's in he's in concussion protocol. You guys know how that goes. That is, of course, of all things, the most case-by-case basis. We'll be taking it as such moving forward. So we don't know about Seathan's status for Sunday, but I probably would mark him down as doubtful because this is his third concussion in the last four years. So we heard, we certainly hope Seathan gets better soon. Wish him all the best. And we'll continue to monitor uh, the Seathan Carter and Austin Jackson injury situations. We'll keep you posted here on Dolphins Day. Be sure to turn on your notifications. Let's get into some trade rumors now. We talked about Teddy Bridgewater yesterday potentially getting traded. And a lot of y'all were in the comments kind of asking about the trade value with Bridgewater. Here's what fan cited said about that. I think the Miami Dolphins can get a third-round pick for Teddy Bridgewater. He's a guy who has won games in the league, who usually doesn't turn the ball over, who play, who players seemingly respect. I think that gets you a third-rounder. I don't know how realistic that is, but I'm 100% taking a third-round pick for Teddy Bridgewater. That would be an absolute steal. He's your backup quarterback. Might be the third-best quarterback on the roster because Skylar Thompson's QB3. I don't think it's realistic for the Dolphins to get a third for Teddy, but I'm 100% taking a third if the Dallas Cowboys offer, I'll offer it after the Dak Prescott injury. Now, would you take a third-round pick for Teddy Bridgewater? Type T for take, or if you wouldn't, type W down in the comment section. Go down. Let me know what you would do. I'm 100% typing T for take. I would take it in a heartbeat. Definitely want to mention this as well because the Dak Prescott situation has led to a lot of backup quarterbacks being in trade rumors, and I want to evaluate kind of Teddy against some of these other guys. So Jimmy G is the number one guy that's been linked to Dallas after the Cowboys, uh, you know, after the Dak Prescott injury with the Dallas Cowboys. So do the 49ers, would they feel comfortable trading Jimmy G because Trey Lance is still very unproven? In fact, in the odds that were released this morning about the first quarterback to be benched, Trey Lance was leading that list. Gardner Minshew might be the second best backup quarterback in the league but there's no shot Philadelphia would trade him to a division rival in Dallas. Cam Newton, a little bit washed. I don't know if the Cowboys would want him. And then Case Keenum in Buffalo. Yeah, they have Josh Allen, but they don't have a third quarterback. All they have is Keenum and uh, and Josh Allen. So very similar as well with Andy Dalton in New Orleans. A lot of people think Andy Dalton, uh, that might be a possibility because he's played for the Cowboys before. He was decent as the backup there in 2020, filling in for Dak after Dak's injury that season 
However, the Saints only have two quarterbacks on the roster. So the Dolphins are in a very unique situation right now where they have a very good backup quarterback and a very good third-string quarterback. The third-string guy is so good, they'd probably feel comfortable enough trading the second-string QB. I think it's possible that Teddy goes to Dallas. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram, at Willie Fins. Just topped on the IG yesterday. Go and hit me with the follow, at Willie Fins on Instagram. Want to hit on this before we leave. Fin Zone tweet this out. Dolphins UDFA corner, Cater Kohu, was the highest-graded rookie of week one. Per PFF. So let's think about this for a second. The highest graded rookie in the entire league is not a first round pick, not a second round pick, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, not a seventh round pick, not a guy that played D1, not a guy that played FCS, not a guy that played FBS, who played at Division II Texas A&M Commerce. What a story that we're seeing transpire in Miami with Cater Kohu, the Texas A&M Commerce product. And a lot of folks already have a nickname for him. Vader Kohu is apparently the nickname that we're giving to Cater. He tweeted out yesterday that he likes it, but he's open to other ideas as well. So we'll see what goes down. But it's a pretty funny meme right there. Vader Kohu joining the uh, the dark side, if you will. Thanks for watching Dolphins Today. This has been Willie Fins. We'll see you tomorrow talking about some more Dolphins news and rumors. Also, just a reminder, we're live every Thursday. Be sure to join us for our live show at 4 o'clock Eastern time.